this video, we will cover the most common issues with your Grandstream IP phones and provide some troubleshooting tips on how to fix them. The type of issues we'll be covering here are related to network, SIP registration, and audio communication issues. IP phones rely entirely on network connection to function. Knowing some basic network troubleshooting tips can help you fix easy network related issues. When your Grandstream IP phone cannot connect to your network, it will display the message network down on the LCD screen. You can follow these troubleshooting tips to fix it. First, verify the ethernet cable is functional and is plugged correctly into the LAN port. Also make sure the other end of the cable is connected to the port on the switch and that the port is active. If the IP phone is set up to connect to Wi-Fi, ensure Wi-Fi is enabled by pressing the menu button and go to System, Network, Wi-Fi Settings and check that SSID and pre-shared key are entered correctly. When the IP phone is successfully connected, the Wi-Fi indicator will be displayed in the top right of the LCD screen. You can also check the network status on the IP phone to confirm if the phone gets assigned an IP address. If you are using DHCP, the DHCP server should assign the IP phone an IP address and other network values such as gateway IP address and DNS. If you have assigned a static IP address to the phone, ensure they are entered correctly. To further verify the IP phone connectivity, you can ping the phone from the command line or terminal in your computer. A successful ping is an indication the IP phone is connected and reachable, and at this stage, your network issue is resolved. If the phone is still not assigned an IP address and still shows the network down message, check if the switch port requires the traffic to be tagged with the VLAN ID. You can set that up using the phone's keypad menu by going to network settings. If no VLAN tag is required, try to connect the IP phone directly to an available LAN port on your router. This will help rule out any issues with your switch and cabling. If the network down issue persists, a factory reset of the IP phone may be required. For the phone to be able to make and receive calls, a successful SIP registration to an IPPBX or hosted IPPBX is required. When you run into registration issues, you can try these troubleshooting tips. Log into the web interface of the phone and verify that the account is active and SIP settings are entered correctly. The SIP settings are provided by your VoIP carrier or the IPPBX administrator. The IP phone web interface can be accessed by typing the IP address of the phone in your browser search bar. Also make sure you log in with the username admin and the associated password. The SIP settings are entered in their account general settings page. Today many VoIP providers require the use of TLS as the transport protocol. By default, Grandstream IP phones use UDP as the transport protocol. If your VoIP provider or hosted PBX requires TLS, make sure you enable TLS on the phone by going to SIP settings of the account, then go to basic settings and change SIP transport from UDP to TLS TCP. Another common issue that might cause the phone not to register is when you have incorrect DNS information. This might become a problem if your VoIP provider is using a domain name instead of an IP address. You can use the keypad menu to check the DNS information and the status, network status. You can also use the tools available from the web interface of the phone and their maintenance tab. To confirm the phone is able to resolve the domain name, of your VoIP provider or IPPBX, you can use the ping tool and enter the domain name associated with the SIP server. If the ping is successful, the result should show the domain name is alive. If the domain name is not resolved, you can change the DNS information to one that is known to be working. 
You can also use the same ping tool to test if an IP address is reachable. If your network uses firewall rules for added security, you should check the existing firewall rules do not block SIP registration. Also, make sure SIP ALG is disabled on the firewall. Another common issue with the IP phones is no audio or one-way audio communication when the call is picked up. To troubleshoot this issue, you can follow these steps to isolate the root cause of the issue. First, ensure the handset is properly plugged into the handset port. If the handset is plugged into the headset port by mistake, there will be no audio on the handset when the call is picked up. During an active call, check the volume level by pressing the volume buttons on the phone. This will ensure the volume is not too low that you can't hear audio. If there is still no audio on the handset, you can enable speaker mode on the phone during an active call to confirm if you will have audio input and output. This step is important to verify if you have a defective handset or non-functional curly cable. The GRP and GXP IP phones have a built-in audio loopback tool that you can run to test audio output and input. This tool is available via the keypad menu and the system, factory functions, audio loopback. This tool will help determine if the handset or speaker on the phone is defective. If the audio loopback confirms the handset and speaker are functional, it is possible the audio communication issue is related to SIPNAT. A common occurrence in VoIP communication is when there is no audio or one-way audio during an active call. Basically, the call is established, but one side of the call is not able to hear the other side of the call. When you have such an issue, the first thing to try is turn off SIP ALG on the router. SIP ALG is a router feature that is usually enabled by default on most home routers. So you will need to log into your router, search for this feature, and disable it. If SIP ALG is disabled and you still experience one-way audio, you can manually set the phone to use stun mode for NAT traversal. Stun mode enables an IP phone behind NAT to learn about its public IP address and use it for audio communication. There are two steps involved to set up stun mode on the IP phone via the web interface. First, you select the active account and go to network settings and change NAT traversal to stun. Next, you go to settings, general settings, stun server, and you enter the IP address or domain name of a valid stun server. If you do not know one, you can use the grand stream server stun ipvideotalk.com. If you follow these troubleshooting steps and still are experiencing issues, Grandstream Networks has a support team dedicated to assisting you with any issues you may have with our product. You can access Grandstream support by going to helpdesk.grandstream.com.